Hello and welcome to day number 47 of our Daily Bread devotional videos. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the season that we've been in. We've been challenged in this 50 days of transformation to really go spiritually deep within our life. And I think for many of us, what God has done through this time has been remarkable. These devotionals that we've set up every day throughout the week, I hope that they've challenged you. I hope that they've guided you a little bit. And honestly, it's, it's kind of encouraged you in your walk with God. It's been remarkable to spend our time with you and we thank you for taking time every day to check out The Daily Bread. As you know, it's been our custom to memorize a verse every week that can just kind of align us where God is directing us and, and something that will help us in our daily walk. And this week's verse that we've been memorizing is actually one of my favorites. It's Matthew 6, 33. And it says, seek first God's kingdom and what God wants, then all our other needs will be met. And the reason why I love this verse is because honestly, sometimes when I wake up or I go throughout my day, I don't always think about what God wants. It's more so what do I want or what are my needs? But when I recite this verse, when I, when I think about it or when I read it, it reminds me that I want what God wants for me because ultimately at the end of the day, what God's desire for me is far greater than what my desires are for myself. So I would challenge you to memorize the verse, apply it, live it out, and really begin to see what God will do through your life by seeking Him first. Another challenge I'd like to present to you today is to remind you just to keep on praying because this weekend is a big weekend for us. It's our Heart for the House offering that we're taking this weekend. And Pastor Luke challenged us this week just to pray and ask God, what would you have me do to be a part of this? How can I be a part of moving God's kingdom further here by my sacrifice, by my gifts, and through my offering. And so continue to pray what God can do. Some of you guys, God has already placed a number on your mind. Some of you, you're a kingdom builder and you're gonna fulfill that pledge. For others, you're gonna join in with our one day to feed the world. But whatever way that you can participate, allow God to stretch you, allow him to use you. And I believe that you're gonna be amazed at what God is not only gonna do through you, but what he's gonna do through Dream City, through our heart uh, for the house offering that's gonna take place this weekend. But hey, can I go ahead right now and just share with you another verse that I think will encompass everything that has been taking place during this 50 days of transformation through our spiritual growth campaign? It's found in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 3 and 4. And this is what it says. It says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who has called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. I want to let you know that what we've experienced during the season doesn't have to end this weekend at the 50th day. But honestly, this is just the beginning that God is taking you to so that you can continue to experience everything that God has called and lined out for you to live. That we have every tool necessary at our disposal. And I think that's encouraging because I think sometimes we don't always feel that way. Some of you, you have developed some habits during the season that maybe you never had before. Some of you, you've learned how to pray every day through that 21 days of prayer. Some of you, you've made church a regular, attending church a regular habit within your life. Maybe you didn't always attend regularly, but now you've found yourself not missing a service because you don't wanna miss out on what God has for you. Some of you, it's reading your Bible every day, checking in on these devotions. Others have become more vulnerable and stepped out and joined a fusion group or a small group in homes. And others of you have found opportunities to serve. All of these things are tools that we laid out as a church to help you to continue to grow in your spiritual walk. But I wanna remind you that it doesn't have to end here, that all of those things are still at your disposal, that we have everything that we need to continue to grow and live the life that God has called us to live. It's what Peter was saying. And I think that's our desire as followers of Christ, that we do want to live a godly life, that we wanna be more Christ-like. But I think sometimes we feel a little bit inadequate. I don't know about you, but have you ever had a task at hand that feels like you just didn't know how to accomplish or you didn't feel like you had what it took? Maybe you didn't know the wherewithal or the wisdom or the favor, or there's just something that just felt that made you feel just insecure and, and you just didn't know. Well, I love it that it was Peter that, that wrote this verse that he says that by God's divine power that we have everything that we need. Because when you read through Peter's story in the New Testament, uh, you can see a lot of his shortcomings that he experienced in his life. 
You think about when he stepped out and walked on water, but then of all of a sudden he began to take his eyes off of Jesus and began to fear, and all of a sudden he began to sink. Or, or what about the moment where he encounters Jesus in the court after he'd been arrested and he denies even knowing him? Again and again we see that Peter has these shortcomings, but it wasn't until that Peter uh, experienced the resurrected Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, it changed his life forever. And that's the divine power that we're talking about today. When we experience the resurrected Christ and understanding the power of the Holy Spirit, it's that divine power that helps us in our inadequacies. inadequacies. Maybe it's, it's chaos that's it's kind of just circling around you. It's that divine power that gives you the peace to walk through those situations. Maybe it's you, you, you're, you're fearful in these moments uh, and you're walking into something and you don't know how to handle it. It's that divine power that gives us the courage to know that God is with us in the storm. It's understanding that He has given us every single tool that we need to be able to live the life that God has called us to live. It's an amazing statement that Peter makes. And I want to challenge you, that statement is true of you. If you've received the gift of grace within your life, that marvelous grace that it talks about, if you've received the power of the Holy Spirit within your walk, you have every tool necessary. Not only has God called you, but He's equipped you. So let's not let this be a time that comes to an end and we say, oh, well, this was a great season of growth. No, let this just be the beginning as we continue to build on the foundation that has been laid before us so that we can be everything that God has called us to be. It's been remarkable what God has been doing in the season, but I can't wait to hear about more of the miraculous and the powerful things that are happening because we said, you know what? This, is, this isn't just for a season, but this is a lifestyle that I'm going to live out and be everything that I know that I can be found in God. Because not only has He gifted us with it, not only has He given us that power, but He has also called us to more. I just wanna take a moment. Let me just pray for us as we come to our conclusion of our Daily Bread devotionals and we look forward to what God has for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for our time that we've been able to have just during these Daily Bread devotionals that have encouraged and inspired and challenged us in our walk. But I pray that we would understand that this is only the beginning, that you have equipped us with everything that we need for godly living because of your divine power. So I pray, God, that this is not the end, but just the beginning. And I can't wait to hear about the continued miraculous things that are happening because we put you first, God, your will first. And we know, God, that you're doing great and marvelous things within our life because we have surrendered our will to yours. And we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. God bless, church. We love you.